Thank you. Let's bring in West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from Capitol Hill. Senator, thank you for being here. Uh, good to be with you, Brett. How are you? I'm um, great. Listen, we want to talk about what Peter just talked about, about crime and the back and forth on all of that. But I, I want to talk about the legislation that's coming up. And that is, this week there was a lot of back and forth about whether President Biden was going to sign a bipartisan infrastructure bill if it didn't wasn't tied to a reconciliation bill much bigger down the road. There's now word that moderate Democrats are saying that maybe that reconciliation bill can go forward, but can only be $1 trillion or less. Is that true? Well, I don't know what the size of the reconciliation bill will be. First of all, uh, Brett, there was never a doubt in my mind that, that President Biden didn't support the bipartisan infrastructure, we'll call it traditional infrastructure, roads, bridges, water and all the different things that we have done. This is the greatest, largest uh, bill that we've ever done in infrastructure in the history of the United States. It has something for everybody, and every state needs so much help in this. And my state has one of the worst bridges, uh, bridge situations in the, in the country, and we desperately need it. We need roads repaired, and we need roads built. So it's good for everybody. So with that, I never doubted that he would not support it. He made a mistake when he spoke. He corrected that mistake. Uh, and. Uh, we're moving forward, and he's out now. Not only did he correct his mistake, he's out now supporting it and going full, full, full blast. So I appreciate right. that. Saying that he's part. going to go, he he wants the bipartisan bill, of course, but he's also saying he wants to sign a bigger right. reconciliation bill. Uh, this is what Nancy Pelosi has said about all of this. Let me be really clear on this: we will not take up a bill in the House until the Senate passes the bipartisan bill and, an and a reconciliation bill. That seems pretty clear from the Speaker yeah. of the House. For, for you, what does a reconciliation bill have to look like? And are you alone in what you're thinking about it? Well, Brett, I don't know. About, I've been alone for a long time, it seems like, here <laughs> recently. But <laughs> what I will say is this. Reconciliation, I, I, am, I uh, understand we'll probably have to go to reconciliation because uh, I did not vote for the 2017 tax, uh, the tax bill that President Trump put forward. I had worked for a long time in a bipartisan way with my Republican colleagues and friends and Democrats, and we thought we had a good bipartisan bill for tax overhaul. But at the end, they went to reconciliation and no Democrats were there. And I thought it was weighted uh, too, uh, too much to the to the high-end earners, if you will. With that, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm agreeable to making adjustments to the tax code, which I think will be fair and competitive. I use the word competitive, Brett, because we are in a global market. We're in a world global market here that we have to compete. And with that, you can't go just throw caution to the wind. So what we're gonna do is look at all the rates that we think can be adjusted in a competitive rate. Let's see how much money that would spin off and then based on what money we have to spend, our priorities and what we should do, and, and what we call a human infrastructure bill. Also, Brett, I, I remind everybody that we put out close to $6 trillion in money in so many various ways, education, helping people, Medicaid assistance, extensions of food programs. We're doing an awful lot, we have done an awful lot. So all that should be taken into consideration. Also, what's been accomplished, but with that, we have $28.5 trillion of debt. And I've said this before, we are writing checks our, ca our children could never cash. And we're putting them Let in Let me try this a different position. way. If the okay. reconciliation bill they're envisioning on the progressive side is four to six trillion, you're not going with that. I don't think I could ever get there to that. I don't think that we, I don't, not unless we just throw caution to the wind, on the tax code and you care less, are we competing in a global market and are we being fair uh, that you just throw uh, that out the window? Uh, that seems to me just uh, totally out of the ballpark. You've always said here on this show, other shows, that uh, you're, you're against changing the filibuster rules. But there is nuance there because previous nuclear options have been changed by, by changing the Senate precedent, um, not the rules. So. 
So are you for lowering the, lowering the threshold at all from 60 votes to 55 votes or changing that in any way? Brett, I haven't changed at all on that. I've been at 60 votes. I think basically what we need to do is change the attitudes of people, and we should be working together. There, if, if, the, if the Democrats are in minority and the Republicans are the majority, we should be able to find 10, at least 10 reasonable if it's a 50-50. And if they had 54 or 55, then you only need five to get to 60. So the bottom line is, is, is that filibuster is there so that minority has input. I've been in the minority and I've been in the majority. And I can tell you, when you're in a minority, you'd like to have input. If it was going to be a 51 vote threshold, basically just a simple majority, then I would have ran for the House. I wouldn't have run for the Senate. The Senate is different. We have a different role to play. And basically, we're called the most deliberate body for a reason. We do deliberate. Yeah. We don't expect anything to come from the House that's going to be in a bipartisan manner, Brett. We know it's going to be hot as yeah. a firecracker. We've got to cool that thing off. Well, if we're no different in the House, it'll come hot, come in hot, and it'll go out hot. That's not what America and needs. And Kirsten Sinema from Arizona has said something similar, and I think there are other people who maybe haven't spoken out uh, who may feel yeah. the way that you do just privately seeing that. Uh, there are a lot of people, Republicans I talk to, say, what would it take for Joe Manchin to switch parties? Well, if, if a party, if, if switching a party, whether you have a D by your name or an R by your name, changes who you are as a person, then you're in the wrong profession. And it's all about you and not about the oath you take to the office, the oath to the Constitution to protect and defend. That shouldn't be a party affiliation. That should be all of us. Uh, I, I've always said this, Brett. I'm fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. I guess you can put me anywhere you want. But having the D or an R by my name or changing and going from one to another, I've never considered that. I believe in the democratic principles that I grew up with and how I was raised. And I believe to respect every one of my Republican friends because they have a, they have a commitment. And I respect that. And we sit down and we talk. We find out once we do, we agree on the problem. If the problem is something that we can all agree on, then you can find a solution. The hard part today, yeah. Brett, is we can't even get agreement on the facts anymore. Everybody brings their own set of facts to the table. I said, you're entitled to your opinion. Just don't bring your own set of facts to support yeah. your opinion. In light of, this is the pushback to that. They say President Biden didn't, didn't win a single county in West Virginia. And do you feel more allegiance if you're getting pushed from Democrats to do something to the people of West Virginia or to the Democratic Party? Well, I'm here because of West Virginia. I'm here because of every person in West Virginia. I love my state as much as anything in the world. Not quite as much as my family, but not far behind. But I, I would do anything for my state of West Virginia. It's been so good to me, the opportunities. I've had a chance to serve as governor for two terms, secretary of state before that, House of Delegates, state senate. I know this process very well. These are good people. And the bottom line is they have changed. I've told the Democratic Party uh, what had happened to people like West Virginians or people that come from rural areas uh, that they right all of a sudden find themselves not good enough, uh, not uh, clean enough, not green enough, and not smart enough. Well, I'm sorry. This is the same good West Virginians and independents and Republicans that we've always been. They just started voting differently for that reason. But and they mm -hmm. still send me back to represent them, and I do the best that I possibly can. I know Last them. Thing, they don't know me as the Democrat, Joe the Democrat. They know me as Joe. Well, you've been successful as a Democrat in West Virginia. Last thing quickly, will Congress ever care about the national debt again? And when? You know, Brett, I'm concerned about this. I don't see either side. I don't see either side, I'll be honest with you. They all talk a good game. But there's no one, no one truly concerned about all of the trust funds we have, the highway trust, all the different things, Medicare, Medicaid, you have Social Security. What are we doing? Are we at least sitting down and thinking, how are we able to basically continue these programs that are so desperately needed, but also making sure that we live within, we live within our means? We had a balanced budget amendment in West Virginia. Most states have a balanced budget amendment. As governor, I said every week, and then when the crash happened in 2008 and 2009, it was every day making adjustments so we could live within our means. 
And when you get outside of your means and you get, my, my grandfather would always tell me, Brett, he said, Joe, uncontrolled debt, unmanaged debt will make cowards out of the decisions you'll make. You'll make cowardly decisions. And we are making cowardly decisions because we will not face the truth of basically a situation that we have with unimaginable debt. Debt, 28.5 trillion. Hey, Brett, four billion every day, like clockwork. I get a wake up call every yeah. morning. Four billion every right. day, it increases. Yeah, and if interest rates go up one point, we pay more on the oh, national my goodness. debt. Well, oh, the interest my goodness. rates on more than we pay for the Pentagon. Uh, Senator Joe Manchin, thank you so much for the time. You're welcome back anytime. Sure, Brett, it's always good to be with you. I hope all is well and hope the family's well. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.